And now let's go over quadratic functions. So quadratic functions are typically denoted as y is equal to x squared, where we have our following function over here with the respect to the domain and range, our domain being the x-axis, our range being the y-axis. Uh, domain is going out all the way out far to the left as denoted by negative infinity, and all far out to the right as denoted by positive infinity. The range, on the other hand, focuses on all real numbers, including zero, to positive infinity, hence going all the way up. And there are two parts that really come apart that construct quadratic functions. The vertex, which is denoted as this dot over here, the pinnacle, and then we have the axis of symmetry, which is an invisible line which goes all the way down, far to the left and far to the right. And typically, it's like a mirror between one side to another. And with quadratic functions, there are three typical equations that we would have to keep in mind. Uh, our basic algebraic function of y is equal to ax squared plus b of x plus c. Then we would also have x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then finally, we have our vertex equation, which is denoted as y is equal to a of x minus h squared plus k, where h and k represent the vertex. And now let me just move out so we can get a good clear idea. Let me just move this over. Feel free to take a screenshot of this part and now we're going to head over to our first two practice problems. Now in our first practice problem, let's go over the following equation. So we have y is equal to x squared minus 1. So typically when we have a following graph that we have over here, we have a y and x. And whenever we denote our following equation, we always need to check exactly what slope is. Our slope is typically denoted as m, which is rise over run. And it's also y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then b is typically our y-intercept. We can take parts from our linear equation and apply it here, but in this case, we have x squared minus 1. So if we were to actually graph, in particular, what our equation will be, it looks like our slope is going to be 1 over 1 to be able to start with. 1, 1, 1, 1. Since we're dealing with a quadratic equation, we're going to have two different points in general. However, our y-intercept is going to be negative 1, so that means it's going to have to be pinpointed right here in this area. It looks like 1, 1, 1, 1. This is where... This is just the basics of how we graph our quadratic equation as a first warm-up practice problem. Now let's go over another one that's a little more complex. Now let's go over a second practice problem. So we are given our quadratic equation, y is equal to 2x squared minus 4x minus 1. And in quadratic equations, there are three equations we rely on. We have y is equal to a of x squared plus b of x plus c. Then we have x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then for the last one, we have a vertex one where it is known as y is equal to a of x minus h squared plus k, where h and k are denoted as the vertex. And h is referred to as the x of the vertex, and k is referred to as the y-intercept of the vertex. So for us to be able to figure out exactly um, what we need to do, the number of steps that we need to follow are going to be, one, we need to figure out the vertex. Second, determine axis of symmetry. Third, calculate the y-intercept. And 
and then finally sketch the graph. Do so with the following. In order for us to figure out what the vertex is, we're actually going to be relying on this bonus equation, strangely enough. So it's denoted as H B over negative two A. And for us to be able to figure out exactly what we have, so we have a following equation, we can actually figure out what A, B, and C are. So we already know that A is gonna be referred to as two. So we can just write it down two, two over here, and then B will be denoted as negative four right here because of this negative, because the minus sign that's right here, will be denoted as a negative. And so we have negative four over negative four, which is then put back to one. And now what we can do, since we already figured out what H is, and we need to figure out what K is, what we can do is that we can actually just plug in K because this trick focuses on figuring out what the Y intercept is. So we can figure out, if we were to plug in K for Y, we can then determine squared minus four X minus one since we can plug in both of these points together, not only are we gonna plug in K, but we're also gonna plug in H. So we'll have K is equal to two, uh, it looks like one here, squared minus four, one minus one. K is equal to, looks like two minus four minus one, and all together we have negative three. So we determine that H and K are denoted as one, negative three. That's where our vertex is located. So we determined that our vertex is one and negative three. The next part is determine the uh, axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry is the vertical line that passes through the vertex from what we already given our concept example and concept overview. And there's an invisible line that showcases as a mirror. And uh, in order for us to be able to determine our axis of symmetry, we can set up the fact from what we already got from H of K It looks like that our axis of symmetry can actually be converted from what we got from H already and can be set up as one and then we calculate the Y intercept we do so whenever, um, so by definition, what the y-intercept is, is whenever uh, the, is whenever a line passes through uh, the part on the y-axis when it hits zero over here. So what I mean by zero is actually when the x-axis turns zero, the y-intercept is the point where the line will actually hit whenever the x is zero. And to do so, we can actually just plug in for our equation. So if we have our equation, y is equal to two x minus four x minus one. We could just plug in zero to be able to get our output. So that would also mean two I forget, squared minus four zero is one. After we do the math and everything, and we multiply everything all together, we know that the y-intercept, it looks like it's going to be negative one. And we plugged in x for zero. So therefore, a y-intercept is going to be zero and negative one. Finally, when we sketch, finally we sketch a graph. So for us to be able to figure out 
our entire graph, we can actually set up a replace. So I'm going to put down the lines one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So that is why. Since we already have a vertex being 1 and negative 3, where that's the x and y, b, 1, 2, 3. So we have negative 3. Let me just put this right here. And for us to determine the slope, Remember when we went back on our linear equation and we actually determined what our slope was? Our slope is always denoted as rise over run. And whenever we see uh, our slope, there's always a small little um, fraction that's underneath if it's just a whole number, maybe a one right over here. So it will be two over one. And so that means it will go one, two. And that means it will be going to the left, right over here. It will still go up one, two. And goes to the left over so left here, and so on and so forth. And so since it was also squared as well, it will go up one, two, to the right. And look, we see our y-intercept over here. So we have zero and negative one. So it's going up. I'll, I'll use another color. Two, one. Two, one. There we go. Let me see the dots. It goes up, it goes up, it goes up. Probably draw this better. It goes up. One, two. There we go. We just keep going up. Let me just move this out. And all right. Feel free to take a screenshot of this part as well. And let me just wrap this up all together so we see the whole part. Now feel free to take a screenshot of this part as well. And let's move over to our next part for functions. Hey everyone, thank you again for taking time to watch this video. If you found this video helpful, be sure and feel free to please like and subscribe, smash the like button, and ring the bell for any notifications as well. And if you have any other questions, by all means, feel free to put it in the comment section as well. And as always, take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.